let's imagine a future together. A future where our healthcare industry focuses on the prevention of disease and not just trying to cure it. Right now, when we feel sick, we go to the doctors, take our prescription, and get on with our lives. But what if we led lives that created barriers to disease instead of opening the gates to it? I believe there are better ways to improve health than just pharmaceuticals alone. How we eat, how we sleep, and how we move are vital components. I've been focusing on how movement affects cognitive function. How we move defines who we are in significant ways. And movement begins in the brain. It's the control center of the body. Emerging research is showing a little of how different movement activities affect the brain in different ways. In a study just March of this year, Dr. Raji at UCLA showed that varied activities like gardening and dancing increases brain volume and decreases the risk of Alzheimer's by 50%. Dr. Adele Diamond did a review study on movement research, of which there's fairly little, and found that bimanual coordination, rhythmic motion, frequently crossing the midline, and hand-eye coordination were particularly valuable when, it looks at, when looking at executive function in the brain. Blair and Raver in 2014 showed that real-world activities, such as martial arts, showed more widespread cognitive benefit than targeted computerized training. This is a picture of my brain waves while stepping in place. As you can see from the concentration number, that doesn't take a lot of energy for my brain. I'm going to be working with Dr. Kregolson from University of Victoria on a study that will compare well-learned aerobic activity to more complex activity. We believe the complexity provides some different benefits than just exercise alone. This is a picture of my brain while doing Kali. As you can see, I'm going to flip back and forth. There's a big difference there. Now, I wish I could tell you what those colored lines mean, but I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm a kinesiologist. I specialize in martial arts and movement. I don't need those pictures to know that something different is going on, though. I feel it, and all my training brothers feel it as well when we train. So what is Kali? It's a Filipino martial art known for its use of weapons and tools and progressive flow drills. Our instructor, Gurudan Inosanto, is a pioneer of this art. He's been training and teaching it for 60 plus years. And even though he turns 80 in a couple of months, he is still as sharp as a tack. This is one of the reasons that I follow this research. Another reason is a story that he frequently tells us during class about a student who came up to him and thanked him at a seminar. The student had been in an accident and lost his memory. Couldn't remember his wife or his kids. He attributes getting his memory back to a drill in Kali called Heaven Six. Let me show you what that looks like. Fine, good job. I think that deserves a round of applause. So obviously, that's a pretty complex movement pattern. Does it have rhythmic motion, crossing the midline, bimanual coordination? Absolutely. Uh, and it takes a while to learn it. And when we were learning it, we found it difficult. And we experienced something called the brain scramble, which is a term I stole from Dr. O'Shea that we had from earlier. Rather than me try to explain that, I'd like you to feel it. So I'd like everyone to take their left hand, snap the shape of a triangle, well, that's cool for that sound guy earlier. <laughs> OK, take your right hand. Snap the shape of a box, four corners. Good. So for the two, three people in the room that can't snap their fingers, I apologize. Um, <laughs> we'll get to you later. You know what's coming next. Try and do them together. Now, there's several types of people. There's the people that, that try, there's the people that just do like dodecahedrons all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but how many people feel like it's, um, it's like your brain's misfiring? It's like the spinning beach ball on a Mac, right? That's because you're, you're making your brain work harder. You're splitting its attention and you're adding cognitive load. And just like a muscle, when you make it work harder, it gets stronger. I use Kali for a variety of different programs. 
I train elite athletes here on UCLA's campus, the water polo team and the, mar and the football team. Um, I train police officers. I teach children with autism. And I've been training Daniel for about four or five years. Daniel has cerebral palsy. He has issues with his gait and his balance. And as you can see in the video, we're using a modified Heaven 6 drill here to kind of as contextual interference so he doesn't really think about his walking. And by doing this, he can walk in circles. As you can see, the camera has to catch up with him. He can walk backwards and forwards and laterally. And you see on his face, he really enjoys this, especially when he hits me in the hand, which seems to be quite often. Rather than me talk more about Carly, I'd like to show you more. I think that'll be a lot more exciting, even with my accent. So let's bring Guru Comrade, go roll him back up. So they're gonna do five motions, one, two, three, four, five, that's the code, and, he, and it starts with basic and gets a little bit more complex. So as they go, it's cob cob, now they're crossing the midline, going to the low line, that heaven six we already saw, and standard six. Time, good job, yes. So for them, that's a well-known motion. They've done it thousands of times. It's part of our warm-up in class. So we need to challenge them. So instead of one, two, three, four, five is the code, why don't we try, and this is random, we didn't practice this, uh, two, one, three, four, one. <laughs> Time, good job, yes. So while that was, that was still very good, did, did you see it kind of slow down a little bit as they were, as they were processing the code? Um, let's just make it harder for them, because I think that's fun. <laughs> this time I'm going to give them the first number, and they're going to start. And halfway through the motion, I'll give them the next number, and then the next, and then the next. Yes, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> so we'll start with number four. Two. One. Five. Six. <laughs> you got to give me a minute on that one. <laughs> so when I said six, it's not part of the code. There's no movement associated with that. They were meant to improvise. I was expecting more Kali. Um, but I think if we get hashtag running man UCLA going, this might go viral. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> okay, the next drill. I'm gonna take some more structure out of it. Instead of following a code, all they have to do is stay within the parameters. The parameters for this drill, you hit, I hit. Let's see, 20 clicks from Brada. Time, good job. You see how their movement changed with that? Because of the random nature of the strikes, they became more expressive. They used more problem solving. They became creative in ways not to get hit. If we take more of the structure away and we put it into a play environment, they're gonna spar, okay? What matters here is, is not what code you know, what the skill set that you can memorize, or standardized tests that you can complete. But if you can take the knowledge and apply it to truth in the moment, into a real world application, that's vital for learning and development. So let's see them spar. The only rule on this one is you hit whenever you want, or whenever you can. Time. Oh. <laughs> so I've shown uh, a very small piece of Kali. Um, as you can see, there's, a, there's a, really an unlimited number of progressions and drills and combinations. But it's not the only complex motor activity. I don't have Mike and Alex up here just because they're amazing world-class drummers. I believe drumming is very important. Whenever I drum, I get the brain scramble all the time. So we're gonna play a little game. Alex is gonna give us a, a quick beat. Mike's gonna watch and listen and see if he can copy it. Our job is to see whether he gets it right. 
Alex, first one. Let's see what you got, Mike. That's pretty spot on, right? Yeah, okay. Too easy. Alex, ramp up the complexity. Let's go. It's getting a little harder, okay? Let's, let's ramp it up more. Alex, you're a world-class drummer. You've been drumming for decades. Let loose, brother. Show us what you got. Woo! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> the reason I've shown different types of movement is um, not because these are the new trends in classes or on every corner, or we want you to go to do this. Um, actually, my message is the opposite. We as a species have been doing this for millennia. No matter what country you're from, what language you speak, what color your skin is, or what faith you follow, movement crosses cultural boundaries. We all play, we all dance, we all make music, and we all fight sometimes to survive. The big question is why? Why have these things stood the test of time? I believe it's because they're hardwired into human development. I believe that we are as advanced a species as we are because we've been doing these things for thousands of years. This begs the question, why are they being stripped from education systems and schools when we know they're so valuable to a child's development and even to a, an adult's development? We know that structural and functional changes happen in the brain and body as a direct result of movement. But imagine if we knew more. Imagine if we knew the specific effects of activities that are hundreds of thousands of years old, and we used today's technology and research methods and applied them to treat a variety of diseases and symptoms. Imagine going to the doctors and getting a movement prescription instead of a drug prescription. <laughs> Yoga and Tai Chi to reduce hypertension, stress, and anxiety. Traditional karate for kids with ADHD because of its heavy focus on discipline. Or Kali for cognitive disorders like Alzheimer's or dementia. I think we can create this world simply by shifting a little of the focus of research from drugs that can sometimes be costly and have negative side effects to movement, which is relatively cheap and safe. But we can also make a personal choice. Leave this event today and start your own movement revolution. No matter whether it's drumming or dancing or martial arts, if you do that, you'll find not just another exercise class or hobby, but a life-changing practice that will improve your health in ways that pharmaceuticals never can. My next slide is here because I've talked about Kali as a way to develop athletes and students and people with movement issues. But let's not forget it's an ancient martial art, born on the battlefield and still used in modern warfare today. Carenza, which is a form of shadow boxing with the weapons, really shows the soul of the art well. But also it shows within a single movement practice, individuals can express it in very different ways, as you'll see. Join me, gents. I'm going to close by talking about respect. Respect is a core value in martial arts, and today we're going to show you a traditional Kali salutation. We're doing this, but paying respects to you as the audience. We're paying respects to our instructor, Guru Dan and Asanto, and all of our teachers, and to the art of Kali. But please listen to the words carefully, because I think they apply to everyone, everywhere, and not just Kali. Because for us, Kali is not just a martial art. It is a way of life. I present myself with an open mind and open heart. I acknowledge the hand of friendship is superior to the hand of war. I will take what I've learned with my mind and my heart. May we shed no blood. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you,